Hi guys, welcome back to Snakes and Adders. This is a much belated episode of the Top 5 series. The last episode I made of it was on the 27th of October 2018. That's how long it's been since I've uh, come back to this. But we've had uh, some requests come through to uh, rekindle it and restart it, along with a bunch of uh, questions for the uh, Snakes and Adders Reptile Advice series as well. So we'll be getting around to those in due course. So this is my Top 5 boas. Not necessarily the top five pets or the ones that I would rate the highest as pets, just simply the ones that I like the best. And I will go through them and maybe just give you a little bit of care advice or, or my experiences to share with you. So in at number five, it was at number four, I made it number five, I was arguing with myself, couldn't quite decide. The Solomon Island ground bower, Candoia pulsini. Taxonomy on these can be funny. The amount of times I see these listed as Candoia carinata or Candoia carinata pulsini, uh, I know they've been through some reclassification and some people, uh, there's the tasmis and things like that, they're really complex, but this is just Candoia pulsini, really nice high contrast animal with a cream background and a very deep red set of zigzags and chevrons running down its back. They call them the bevel snouted boas, uh, they're only very small. Even a fully mature female will only reach around three and a half feet in length and be quite stocky. Whereas the boys, you'd be lucky to get them past 18 inches in length. Uh, and as a result, can be very finicky feeders. They are incredibly prolific boas, having massive yields of babies, even though they're such small snakes. This obviously causes us problems because the babies are minuscule and would feed on tiny frogs and lizards in their country of origin. At which point, getting the baby started can be an absolutely mammoth task and not many people undertake it but once started and established or if you can find yourself a sub-adult pair or a, a young adult group of animals i've actually found them to be relatively straightforward pretty slow metabolism uh, metabolic rate sorry uh, and we don't need to feed them too regularly uh, and very rewarding just an interesting snake i mean there's we can go for the obvious choices with the boas but this for me is epitomizes the boas are actually a far more diverse and varied group than people give them credit for. So number five, Candoia pulsini. The one that I was arguing about between the pulsini and this next snake, trying to juggle which one was four and which one was five. And I decided that the Jamaican boa came in at number four. This is one of the used to be insular epicrates. But they've now reclassified it and put it into a genus called Chilobothrus. And Chilobothrus subflavus is its Latin name. Jamaican boas are incredibly interesting snakes because the way that they behave and are reared in captivity is different to a lot of other boas. It can take up to a decade or more to get these to be sexually mature. When you consider that we can have common boas breeding at two years old, not that we would, but they would in theory do so, these guys taking 10 years just to reach a state where they're ready to procreate is interesting and that means that you've got to be committed. You do not get non-committed Jamaican boa keepers. They can be a little bit smelly, they've got a very active musk gland and they're not afraid to use it and deploy it where necessary. But if worked with regularly they'll calm down and they make very good uh, captives, probably for the more uh, experienced keeper, simply because that you never quite know where you are. But their colours are amazing. When they're born, they're born bright orange with none of this black pigmentation. And over time, the pattern develops and comes on. A really impressive snake. Where this shares a commonality with the Candoria we've just been discussing is, even though this snake can reach 2.4 metres or 8 feet in length, the babies when they're born are minuscule and they take forever and a day to establish, get feeding and get growing. Which explains why we have to wait so long. It is curious that a boa of eight feet in length has such small babies, but this is probably owing to the availability of certain prey on the island, and this is what they've developed to do. Superb snake if you can find them. They are actually a protected species, and you would need paperwork to be able to keep them. So, number three. The coastal rosy boa. Lynchonora trivirigata rosia fuchsia. But more specifically, the line of albinos that Randy Lindbergh popularised uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s. Albino rosy boas for me are probably one of the only morphs that I would immediately go to as being a pretty snake. They are just 
bright orange and this beautiful rich buttercream colour as the background. Absolutely stunning snakes. Rosy boas make one of the very best beginner species, but that doesn't mean that I can't appreciate them for what they are, even though I'm probably an intermediate or advanced keeper myself. I appreciate this snake for its beauty, its simplicity, how just personable and wonderful they are, have a great feeding response, and they are as tough as nails. They're one of the toughest of all boas because they come from the furthest north and therefore have to uh, go through the worst winters. So yes, rosy boas, fabulous. And if you're a beginner, this is definitely one to consider. Things start getting tricky at this point, trying to work out. I've only got two options left and, and, and it's trying to... I was arguing with myself about all sorts. I could have included so many more. But for me, when I thought about the true boas, there was only one contender for me. And that's the Bolivian short tail boa. Boa constrictor amarali or amaral's boa. This snake is absolutely phenomenal. It is not a huge boa constrictor like the red tails, although it is its cousin. This comes from the southern part of the boa constrictor group's range and therefore is restricted in size as a result. They're very heavy set. We could probably liken them to being the most blood python-esque of the true boas, but only reaching about five and a half feet in length for girls and only four and a half feet in length for boys. They can be slightly irascible as babies, but the adults that I've worked with were perfectly calm and fantastic animals. Because they have how far south their ranges, they do breed later in the year. So if you are working with them, you will probably not actually see breeding activity until around now. Whereas most other people, they're actually getting their common boas being born now. And this delay is because of uh, the, the way that the, the year works for the, for the uh, Amarali. Uh, I once mistakenly bred one with a common boa uh, back in my misguided youth when I was young and stupid. Uh, and I put him temporarily in with a girl while I was cleaning out his tank and he locked with her immediately. But we did have 20 babies uh, and I thought that the season was well and truly done and the risk of inbreeding would have gone because I didn't understand the ecology of the boa. So at which point, um, yeah, that was my cock up, but taught me very quickly that their breeding season works very differently to the common boas. Simply stunning. They seem to darken off as they get older. They've got really strong bow ties down their back. Really beautiful snake. Uh, and just, I can't rate them highly enough. More iridescent than standard red tails as well. So, what was number one? Well, for me, there was a clear and present choice. For me, it was always the ultimate snake. You know how boys in the 80s used to have a Lamborghini Countach on their wall? Well, this is my Lamborghini Countach of a snake. It's about as good as it gets. This is the Northern Emerald Tree Bar, Coralus caninus. They occur throughout Suriname and Guyana uh, and down into French Guiana, but generally are only ever exported from Suriname and Guyana. They have varying amounts of white chevrons running down their back and certain localities have quite a bit of extra blue speckling on the back of their neck. They have incredibly uh, well-developed heat pits facially and a very deep face owing to how big their teeth are. A female will reach around six feet in length for an older animal with the average being somewhere more around four and a half to five feet in length and the boys do about four feet in length. They have notoriously tricky uh, digestive problems meaning that they can become constipated and regurgitate so you really have to take your time with the way you feed them and understand that their metabolic rate is incredibly slow. But when you get one that's working, that's feeding, that's doing well, it simply does not get any better. But there is quite a high propensity for things to go wrong. But for me, for the ultimate boa, the top of the tree, the, the absolute ultimate goal, for me it was always the emerald tree boa. And realistically, it's always going to stay the Emerald Tree Boa. I simply love this snake. We'll continue doing this top five because I think it's an interesting project. I've forgot about it for so long. I'm going to come back to it. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll be back again soon with more videos. Cheers, guys.